Vulture City. Ghost Town in Maricopa County, Arizona. Former mining town and host to the Vulture City Paracon. A vault of stories and the first leg in this journey. Who could ask for a better time to go hunting for tales? Could you introduce yourself? Yes, we are Unearthing the Supernatural. My name is Sean Clint. My name is Hero. That's Pop. And uh, we are Paranormal Ghost Hunters. Pleasure to meet you. I'm the Wandering Scribe, collector of stories. Everyone has a story, and I'd like to hear yours. Oh, yes. A good story for the Wandering Scribe, those who kind of go about to hear stories. I'm going to tell a story of what may be here at Vulture City. So, long, long ago, before really humans really established themselves here on this earth, before the mountains, before the sun, the stars had their paths, before the moon was even up in the sky, there were beings that were planning out the world, they were planning out how to adjust and build things for the coming humans. So, they say in those times, there were beings in worlds prior to this one, worlds below ours, worlds in, that are described in different circumstances, different colors. So to us, the net people, the first world is the black world. Now, though the second world is uh, the blue world, the third world is the yellow, and then the fourth world, the world we're living right now is the glittering world. <clears throat> to kind of go back, when the third world was being flooded out, Coyote had stolen water monsters. There's a lot of stories going on with that one. But as that world's being flooded out, there a big corn stalk went away up into the sky, and all the beings of the third worlds was climbing that corn stalk. That reed, that barren, that corn stalk and the reed went up. The first one to come into this world that we live in right now was locusts. So the grasshopper, the being that you, you all see today, he came up and he was kind of the scout. He looked around. He's like, okay, I gotta find a place for us to come into about. As he came about up into this world, he saw monsters, giants, beings of every different types of shape and kind of monstrous faces and claws, horns, scales, everything. He saw that. And he asked, he said, I'm looking for a place for my people to come. They're coming. And the monsters went down and looked at him. Oh, you tiny, you're a little tiny thing. I don't know if you can can survive in this world. If the people are like you, we don't want them here. So they kind of looked around at each other and they came up with a test. They said, you know, little one, if you can survive our test, if you prove your, your, your strength, prove your cunning, who you are, you can, you and your people can stay here. They said, okay. So this huge monstrous being that had four arms and a quarter curve of tusks reached up into the sky and he grabbed the lightning bolt. And as he grabbed the lightning bolt, he shot it at Locus. And as he shot it through Locus, it went all the way through his body and the lightning bolt stayed there. And they saw it and he wasn't moving, Locus wasn't moving. So the giants started laughing. <laughs> and as they're laughing, they kind of were just bellowing, their eyes closed and they're laughing. But when they opened their eyes, the lightning bolt fell. And standing there was Locus and says, I survived. My people can come now, right? They were amazed. They're like, "How did you survive?" He says, "I, I live. I'm here. I've proven myself." They said, "All right. Well, you can stay there." Locus. This kind of story behind that. How did he survive? People ask. Well, Locus shed his skin right before he threw that lightning bolt down. So the lightning bolt hit his his skin, his exoskeleton. And as they were laughing and bellowing, he kind of kicked that exoskeleton away and stood there. He said, I'm fine. <laughs> so, a quick cutting from Locus brought forth the, the people and the other animals that came into this world. Skip forward ahead quite a few years, quite a few years. And monsters and beings are running amok. Humans are starting to come into this world. They're starting to be more physical than spiritual. And these monsters are starting to eat people. They, they found them kind of uh, tasty and delicious. So went out and they were eating people that go to the villages and start harvesting people all kinds of different monsters flying monsters mini horned monsters monsters that would look like boulders but with flesh monsters that had had just just terrible looking imagination
that. You can just imagine just horrible monsters. And they were huge, giant, eating people. So there had to be a way to get rid of them because I mean, the world had to be safer for us humans. So every tribe has stories of monster slayers. Every tribe has stories of heroes that went about and got rid of these monsters. And there's a lot of stories that go along with that. But for here at Vulture City, after the monster hit slayers and the heroes killed all the monsters off, they buried, they had to bury the monsters, they had to bury the giants and the beings because the bodies of the slain monsters were starting to get the people sick. They were starting to kind of have, have uh, kind of their skin kind of getting like bubbly and they started not breathing, kind of the death and decay was, was ruining the land. So the chiefs and the heroes decided, oh, we're going to put them in central spots and we're going to bury them there. And on these central spots, we're going to have warriors and guardians that protect that evil, keep it, keep it contained. Vulture City and the Vulture City Pe or the Vulture Peaks right over here. It's actually one of those burial spots. So they always tell us, don't be digging too deep. Don't you dig too deep. There's going to be things that you're going to release. These monsters may be underneath the ground. You take care and don't dig too deep. Fast forward. Now there, Henry Wickenberg finds gold. He finds a crystal. And he finds this crystal. And they say that sometimes the crystal is a connection to the spirit world. And it tainted his mind with greed. And he saw it as a sign, oh, the crystal, there must be gold here. So he started digging, and sure enough, he found gold. They started mining here at Vulture City. They started digging up. And underneath, they started uh, releasing the monsters. There was no guardians here anymore. The settlers had come in and pushed away the guardians. They pushed away the tribes that were caretakers of the sacred land and uh, fought them off. And unfortunately, the evil was released. Therefore, now we fast forward to present day. The spirits are said to be walking around, the giants, the monsters, are said to be being released from that mine as it's still active today. And we on Unearthing the Supernatural have uh, caught evidence of these old stories, and evidence of these monsters and giants. And we are still investigating kind of how best to, to put these energies back and settle them down. Uh, we're working with the High Council of Indigenous People, we're working with many tribes to uh, remediate some of people's uh, past mistakes. Thank you very much for your time. Is there anything you'd like to share with the people to let them know? Yes. Be, be aware of the historical stories. I'm very glad for the scribe here to be getting these stories. Pay attention to these stories. All the little nuances and all the lessons that they entail. Because they could be your savior in the future. They could be your battle plans to tell you how to react how to act in front of beings of massive power. Pay attention to the stories. Always. Thank you.